Okay. So at this time, I'm going to call to order the Board of Trustees special meeting. It is 8.36 uh, a.m. Um, we've already established that we have a quorum, so we won't do a roll call, but we'll start with the uh, adoption of the agenda. So moved, Corkins. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second, a few minutes. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? I'm sorry, Jennifer, pull the board, please. Yes. Trustee Gomez Heitzberg? Aye. Trustee Corkins? Aye. Trustee Meek? Aye. Trustee Carter? Aye. Trustee Jimenez? Aye. Trustee Scribner? Aye. Trustee Apolov? Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. Okay. Next item is letter C real property, identification of property and negotiators. It's an approval item identifying Mike Giacomini and Randy Rolls to be negotiators on behalf of the board. Okay. Corkins, no approval. We have a motion by Trustee Corkins. Is there a second? Second, Gomez Heitzberg. We have a second by Trustee Gomez Heitzberg. Jennifer, will you pull the board, please? Yes, Trustee Gomez Heitzberg. Aye. Trustee Corkins. Aye. Trustee Meek. Aye. Trustee Carter. Aye. Trustee Jimenez. Aye. Trustee Scrivener. Aye. Trustee Ogblog. Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. Next item is a briefing on workforce and economic development, STEM energy, aerospace, and baccalaureate. Thank you, Trustee Ogblog. Um, if you recall, trustees, this was agendized as a retreat item on January 31st. Um, with the glitch that we had and the time was shortened, we were not able to complete all of the agenda items. So it has been moved to uh, this meeting and in future meetings as well. So at this time, I will invite our presenters, starting with Vice Chancellor Trudy Gerald, followed by Liz Roselle and President Sean Hancock. Um, so Dr. Gerald, please take it at this point. Sure, I'm going to share my screen. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to share my screen and go ahead and get started. I wanna thank you for your time. <laughs> Everybody see that? Okay, let me put it in yes. the right mode. Okay. <laughs> Apologize, I should have had this up. Okay. Good morning. Thank you all again for your time. We're going to spend a little time this morning talking about the efforts of uh, our workforce and economic development efforts here at Kern Community College District. As you are probably aware, um, community colleges have really been expected at this point to have a seat at the table when discussing workforce and economic development, and that's nationwide. And KCCD has certainly modeled taking that lead and showing what it is in your area to really lead the efforts to address your workplace, the workforce, supporting our local industries and ensuring that we have an economy that is um, supportive and growing and stable for all of us. And I wanna thank the chancellor for always advocating for workforce and economic development and understanding the impact that we have on our local regions, both by being educators and by being individuals who are responsible for and take up arms in addressing our local economy. And I wanna thank the trustees for always supporting our efforts. We did a similar presentation last year and we really focused on the Central Mother Lode Regional Consortium as one of our uh, big efforts. We had just taken over the Central Mother Lode, as you know, they are um, or may know, they are the 15 colleges in our Central Valley mother and mother load region. And all 15 colleges come together and we strategize on how to address um, workforce development and our CTE programs as, a, as an aligned group with a strategic focus so that we aren't just in, impacting our individual areas, but we have an opportunity to impact our region as a whole. And that is going very well. They spent the first year really planning and strategizing so that we're moving in step with one another and not separately. And Dr. Jessica Grimes has done a wonderful job in moving us forward. Um, we could go on and on about lots of different things that we are currently focused on today. 
Um, but we're going to stay focused on STEM because we have just a, a bit of time to talk with you today. We're going to talk mostly about STEM, but I want to talk a little bit about the overarching drivers for workforce development, and then I'm going to hand it over to Liz Roselle and Sean Hancock, who will talk specifically about some of the efforts that we're focused on. I'm going to start with just sharing a little bit about our mission. I don't know. There you go my mission, our mission, what drives our work. KCCD is really moved by a lot of different factors and our workforce development efforts are really moved by a lot of factors. There is um, a desire to actualize and we really could put normalize equity in education in the workplace. We talk a lot about equity and equity has been a strong for focus for the community colleges, but we wanna see it be a natural part of what happens both when in education and the workplace. And that's what we get up every day and work towards moving us to. And then of course, we're, we're, in it, we're educators. So improved student success outcomes are always at the forefront of what we do. We're always thinking about our students and how we make sure our students have the best opportunity in life. Whether they're going on to the university or whether they're going directly into the workplace, we work every day to put things in place and strategize Judy, you hit the mute button, if you can unmute yourself. Oh, okay, sorry. You're good now. All right. So I was saying that we're, we're educators, and so improved student success outcomes are always at the forefront of what we are looking to do. And then increased economic and social mobility for our local citizens. So we're always looking at how do we make sure that what we do, whether it's in a classroom or whether it's in our partnerships or co coalitions, how do we make sure that the impact impacts everybody and supports our local citizens so that we have more individuals who are at work, who are stable at work, who have an opportunity for mobility, who have an opportunity for growth, and thus that grows the economy and stabilizes the industries and it comes back to all of us by having a strong economy. I apologize, I'm having the delay here when I hit enter. There we go. Okay, goals and metrics, what really moves us? We're moved by a whole lot of things that drive the goals that we come up with and what makes us focus and check ourselves for accountability of whether we're being successful. So there's the KCCD strategic plan. There are the governor's roadmap. There is the student center funding formula. There's what happens at the state. All of those things come into play. All of those goals are our goals too. We're also driven by the state and federal funding metrics and goals that come with our biggest funding um, uh, uh, funders. And so Strong Workforce is one of the biggest funders of CTE and workforce development in the community colleges. It's been that way for many years. And so they come with metrics and goals. And then the TEA, which is the Carl D. Perkins funds, that's federal funds. And those funds really push us again towards equity. The federal, the, the TEA funds are really focused on certain populations and special populations and making sure that we are addressing those populations. And it's a broad range of individuals. It's not just your typical group. We also look at displaced house, house uh, homemakers, it's an old term, but misplaced homemakers and individuals who have gone back to school after a long time. There's a long array of individuals that we want to focus on and make sure that we're moving them forward as well. And then the local workforce and economic development research and data. And that's the work that we do with our coalitions. That's information that comes with our EDA partners. That's information that comes from Kern. Uh, economic Development Corporation. We take that data and as workforce development professionals, we have a lot of data available to us that allows us to make sure that everything that we do, all of our strategy is evidence-based. It's based on the information at hand as to where are the largest impact is and where our greatest opportunities are so that we make sure that we are driven by data and by facts and not just intuition, although I won't say that doesn't play some role. And so having that kind of data, we have a sense of, and we use data to let us know where are the priority sectors that we believe have, will have the greatest impact in our local economy. 
And that can be an impact that could be negative. That's an impact that would be positive. These are the kinds of industries that if they're not shored up, it will affect the whole. And so we make sure to target our resources in these areas, not exclusively in these areas, but in these areas that will have the greatest impact. So we've talked a lot about healthcare and the work that goes on with our healthcare, healthcare efforts. You know, we've made big strides with energy, with C-Rail, um, and our partnerships in those areas, manufacturing and advanced technologies has looked to really move forward here in Kern. Transportation and log logistics is something that we're spending a lot of time this year focused on because that continues to bubble up in the data as something we need to pay more attention to. Always in Central Valley, agriculture is going to be on the list, business, and of course, we're moving quickly to support our defense and aerospace partners as well. So some of the things, and I'm not going to go through all of these, but I just want to talk about some of the key strategies that we use to move our efforts forward. So we have a strong team that is, does nothing but help us source the funds to make the efforts uh, uh, possible. We have all of these wonderful things that we want to do, and it takes funding to do that. So we have a resource development team that has worked hard to make sure that we have the resources to do the things that we do that makes KCCD such a leader in this area of workforce and economic development. And those are just some of, we could, we could have pages and pages, but those are just some of the highlighted areas of the efforts that we've done just in the last year or two, believe it or not that we've been able to bring in that much money plus times about 10 that we've been able to bring in to move our efforts forward. And then we have our KCCD coalitions and that's where we sit down with the experts, the individuals from industry, our partners who are relevant to the work that we're doing. And we, when we roll our sleeves up and we do real work to really move the needle on the things that have to happen. Um, C-Rail, again, is one of the things you're probably familiar with. In healthcare, the HEAL group has done fantastic work in trying to address the shortage of nurses, trying to provide opportunities for individuals who are in the healthcare care field, but maybe in the lower entry level field. We've developed pipelines to move them up, so that both answers the need for nurses in RVN, RNs, LVNs, et cetera, but we take individuals who are already in the pipeline and provide ways for them to move up. Um, Sean and I and Liz just spent some time with the Mojave Airport. Um, what was that? I've forgotten already. Last week, I was going to say the day. I've forgotten already what day it was. And we're going to next week, we're going to the Edwards Air Force Base. We went to China Lake uh, about a couple of months ago. And with them, we have developed strategies and are developing strategies to address their needs. And we look at it from a college perspective, but we also look at it because the community college is in the, in the position to do both credit, non-credit and fee-based training. We're able to find all kinds of solutions for them, what we can do as a college that's long-term, but also what we can do that's nimble and in the moment. And then, of course, we have our CTE courses, CTE development and support, where, again, we do CTE credit, non-credit, curriculum development. We've taken a big step this year with apprenticeships. Um, Tony Cordova has expanded his role a little bit to work across the district so that we have apprenticeships at all of the campuses. And apprenticeships are wonderful ways to open the door for individuals who are allowed to be both an earner and a learner at the same time. And we know that when people are in the position to satisfy both of those needs, then our retention and our completion is significantly stronger than virtually all of the other strategies that we put in place because they are able to satisfy both of those needs and have a sense of connection. And then our workforce and economic mobility, adult learners. We spent a lot of time this year thinking about those individuals that we still seem to miss outside of the realm of an education or the workplace. And really working with our WIB partners, working with um, our community-based organizations, working with um, centers of excellence, working with uh, individuals throughout the state to come together and partner with each other to create strategies to address those, those disconnected youth. Very often those are the individuals who dropped out of high school and we just lose them. There are lots of individuals that try to reach out to them and we'll get them to a certain place. And now with our non-credit ability, we're able to build more pathways for them to get back in, into being learners and earners. 
Um, we have the disconnected in uh, under, excuse me, underemployed individuals. We have individuals who are in job that have very little mobility. So we try to work with those uh, employers to create opportunities for them to be mobile. And then I wanna go back to the Center for Economic Mobility, that first bullet. That is an effort that Sonia has really spearheaded. Something that's missing in the community college realm is having a center where you can feel confident and she's working with West Ed and some other individuals on this partnership, but we need a place where you can feel confident that data is available, it's relevant, it's current, there are best practices available, we, it's like a think tank, you can convene individuals, and not just for us, but across the community college system, there would be a place where individuals could come to gather this information, think together, and develop strategies that would impact all of California and beyond. And so that's a very ambitious project that's moving forward, very excited for those of us that have been around for a while and always thought, you know what we need? We need some place where you can feel confident that information current and available. So those are just some of the things that we're working on. And again, in, in respect of time, I'm going to stop there, but I obviously could go on and on. So today, because we've talked about so many other things at some of our other meetings with you, we're going to focus in on STEM. And I'm going to invite Liz Rosell, who's been doing some fantastic work uh, with STEM at, at Kern, and then later uh, she will introduce Sean Hancock, our president, Sarah Coso, and they're going to talk about some of the efforts that they've been involved with. So I'm going to step back and allow uh, Liz to go forward. Thank you, Trudy, very much. I appreciate that. And thank you, uh, trustees, for, <clears throat> excuse me, for allowing us to come speak to you today about STEM. I'm not going to give you a very detailed uh, view of STEM, but a brief or overview, very high level of what we're doing in STEM education in current community college district. So I'll go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> so I drew an umbrella here because <clears throat> STEM traditionally has had a very uh, kind of narrow uh, definition based on, not that slide, please. Could you go back? Thank you. STEM has had a very um, uh, restrictive definition in that it, you know, typically those STEM majors are the ones that have calculus. But what we're seeing as uh, emerging technologies grow, that there is such an intersection between STEM and STEM related uh, CTE programs. So I drew an umbrella to say there's a STEM umbrella, but on the fringes of this umbrella is career technical education and the community college baccalaureate. So what we find is that those emerging technologies are really pushing us over into these STEM related CTE programs. And, um, you know, uh, President, I'm sorry, uh, Chancellor Christian in September, 2022, uh, wrote an article in, for Inside Higher, Higher Education that said, create more four-year community college degrees. And the whole purpose of that was to increase, one of the comments she made was to increase educational access. That educational access opens the pathways to high wage jobs. STEM opens the pathway to high wage jobs, but STEM related CTE programs also open the pathway to high wage jobs, as well as the community college baccalaureate degree program. And this has definitely been a focus of Chancellor Christian is to create the pathway to high wage jobs, just like Trudy was explaining previously. So what we're finding is that as CTE increases, our STEM offerings increases. As STEM offerings increase, our CTE programs have more opportunities. And as both of those increase, then we're finding that we have more offerings in uh, for baccalaureate degrees. <clears throat> so I'll go to the next slide, please. So this particular table is just to show you what kinds of programs that we offer. You can see that on the first three columns, 
for Bakersfield College, community, uh, Saracoso Community College, and Porterfield College, I've got a list of STEM programs and STEM-related CTE programs. And you can see that they're being offered at every single college, not all of them, but there is this broad uh, offerings that we're doing throughout the district. And then on the remaining columns, we start with job skills uh, certificates up to certificates of completion, certificates of achievement, building into uh, associate degrees with the AS or AA, and then transfer degrees, and then to the baccalaureate. So we have a wide breadth of uh, STEM-related programs being offered throughout the district, a wide breadth of milestones. And I wanted you to see some of the intersection between our baccalaureate degrees and our lower division offerings. Okay, so we'll go to the next slide, please. So in en enrollment, I thought, well, I'll just show you a couple of very general slides. This is unduplicated enrollment, and it is Saracoso, uh, Bakersfield College, and Porterville College combined. And you'll see that in the enrollment, when we started in 2017-18, that top line on the headcount by major is the total for all of this. And these are just STEM majors, not even the CTE-related uh, STEM majors. And you can see that we were making such an uptick. We hit COVID, we've leveled off, but the thing that I think is so important to realize is that we're still increasing and we haven't decreased. And I think as we build momentum, that will continue to increase. One thing that's interesting on the awards is that the total, which is that top kind of brownish line, that is increasing and STEM uh, awards. And that's interesting because a lot of students don't necessarily get an, a transfer degree in STEM. They typically will just go ahead and transfer because of the amount of technical and STEM courses they have to take in addition to, and, and maybe just less, fewer GE courses. So they don't typically obtain degrees prior to transfer, but I think it just still shows how it's increasing across the district. Go to the next slide, please. So what are our opportunities for STEM and STEM related programs? Well, we can increase enrollment by diversifying program offerings. These are the new emerging technologies. Um, you can see also that we can do focused marketing and outreach. We can offer student academies for middle school, high school, and community college students and develop CTE baccalaureate degrees in STEM-related fields. So for example, on the enrollment, um, Porterville College has a program called Jumpstart. It's a summer pre-college program centered around technology, and they are extending this to Bakersfield College and Saracoso College. Bakersfield College has um, MESA, Math Engineering Science Achievement, which has been a longstanding program that actually Dr. Christian started years ago when she was the Dean at Bakersfield College. And out of MESA, we have many student clubs that have been established. We've got pre-med, biology, chemistry. We have engineers clubs. We also have One Day STEM Academy, uh, is a STEM orientation for incoming students. And then we are building additional middle and high school st summer STEM academies to be offered every summer. <clears throat> we also have um, a STEM related uh, career technical education uh, community college baccalaureate degrees. One in industrial automation, which is our Bachelor of Science that we got back in 2017. And then recently, the Research Laboratory Technology Baccalaureate uh, Bachelor of Science degree as well. And then we have in the works the cybersecurity technology that Saracoso is working on in a Bachelor of Science degree that is upcoming. One thing that's what well, we're finding that's so interesting is that Bakersfield College is a leader in the state for offering baccalaureate degrees. We're the only community college in the California community college system that has two baccalaureate degrees that are being offered, currently offered. And so we want to thank you trustees 
for supporting our efforts to get baccalaureate degrees, because these are in emerging technologies that are going to make a huge difference in our in providing a pathway to high, these high wage jobs. Another thing that we uh, do in providing opportunities for STEM and STEM related programs is building partnerships. And we've been strengthening our partnerships via diverse partnerships. For example, <clears throat> in our STEM program alone, we have the USDA, uh, Central Valley Pathways into Academic Teaching and Higher Ed. We uh, have partnerships with CSUB, UC Merced, Kern Medical um, Center, UCLA and UC Davis. And you will find as we talk about energy later that we are also have a great relationship with the National Renewable Energy Laboratories. We also are resourcing our programs by leveraging grant opportunities. Uh, for STEM, we have a $5 million Title III grant. This provides high touch mentoring and tutoring applied learning and research for our STEM students. We have a $500,000 California Wellness Foundation grant that is providing opportunities in, in collaboration with UC Merced for our pre-med students. Okay, I'll go to the next slide. <clears throat> so our energy program is an example of the one of those STEM-related CTE programs. And you're well acquainted with our California Renewable Energy Laboratory which includes centers of excellence, community education and engagement, technology transfer and workforce development. That gives you CREL. I just had to put an equation in here because we're doing STEM. So <laughs> anyway, that gives you uh, the California Renewable Energy Laboratory. And we've established very diverse partnerships with national labs like the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories, we are working with research universities, UC Merced, UC Riverside, and we have industry partners, for example, uh, California Resource Corporation, Chevron, and we're working with governmental agencies, which would include Kern County and the city of Bakersfield. We are also leveraging grants. We got a uh, $50 million in the trailer bill to the governor's budget this year, just for energy. And we also are participants in the LEAP grants with Kern County and uh, the LEAP grant for the city of Bakersfield. Those are our technical assistance grants that are uh, providing uh, assistance for our carbon management and microgrid applications. And then we are right now in the midst of working as a lead in establishing a direct air capture hub in Kern County. This will provide tremendous opportunities in our area for workforce development. And that DAC Hub application will be coming to you soon. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> so when we look at our programs, we are being very intentional how we build them. And we are putting it in a stackable uh, configuration. So for our energy program, this is our plan. We've already got a non-credit certificate of completion for modern energy. We will build upon that a job skill certificate, certificate of achievement, which faculty are currently working on, a certificate of achievement in energy, then an advanced energy certificate of achievement, which will lead to an associate's degree in energy technology. And hopefully one day we'll have a bachelor of science in energy uh, technology. So energy is definitely a STEM CTE hybrid. And this is what we keep seeing over and over in the CTE related uh, STEM fields. And so we also have, when we are building these kinds of curricular blocks, they have an impact on our STEM offerings. For example, by offering energy, this interacts with chemistry, geology, environmental science. But not only that, it impacts agriculture in our area. We're going to be looking at agrivoltaics. So there is this intersection that we can't get away from. 
And then it will also impact our water technology program. We have had a water technology program, but this is a technology program that needs to be included throughout the district, I think, um, and include uh, you know, what we can impact for training technicians in, in water technology, which is related to energy. So what I wanted you to see today is just this theme of the inter intersection between STEM and STEM related CTE programs, the impacts as we build and our intentionality in continuing to build this. So thank you for supporting us in our innovation. It has uh, It is bringing the districts uh, in this area uh, in, in great strides. So thank you very much. <clears throat> so I'm gonna hand it over to um, President Son Sean King Hancock from Saracoso Community College. Thank you, Liz, um, and good morning, everyone. Uh, so I'll take it here and provide some uh, from here and take provide some specific examples related to defense and aerospace. Uh, next slide, please. So first, what I wanted to highlight is our existing partnerships. We already have partnerships in place with NOC, uh, NOC WD. Uh, so that's a Naval Air warfare center and you add the wd that's the weapons division and so that's there here at china lake um, we have an educational partnership with them that allows us to share numerous resources um, in in developing programs working together that can be physical resources it can be personnel um, there's a lot of opportunities that can um, that we can capitalize from that partnership agreement uh, employment internship opportunities for cybersecurity technicians. We're already doing that, um, both with the base and with some of the contractors, even off base. Um, and that we have opportunities to expand upon that as well. Um, here you see NOCWD STEM employment program, Naval Research Enterprise internship program, and Pathways internship program. These are both a civilian and non civilian internship opportunities that are available to our students across numerous STEM disciplines. At Edwards Air Force Base, we have a presence on base. We actually have a person there um, working from Edwards Air Force Base. Um, we have an office there. Uh, we do enrollment. We provide services. Um, we offer general ed courses there as well, um, primarily the Golden Four, which is your English 101, your English 102, um, speech, and math. Um, so those have been ongoing and we continue to work with them in providing those courses in addition to other courses there through dual enrollment on the, the base, the high school on the base, as well as is um, online education opportunities for personnel. Um, next slide please. So here you heard a little bit about this um, from Dr. Gerald already. Um, we are. We met back in the end of May um, with China Lake. Uh, they came to us um, with. They brought and presented to us um, all of their challenges that they're facing, and I'll go into that in a little bit more detail in in a moment. But th that was the first meeting of the Military and Aerospace Workforce Coalition. Um, we just met last week, as you heard, with Mojave Air and Space Corps doing the same thing, looking to see what their needs, their challenges um, with regard to building a workforce. Um, and then we have a meeting in two days on Wednesday at the Edwards Air Force Base to do that same thing. Next slide, please. So what are we looking to get out of these meetings? What we've learned so far is that we can figure out some of the top emergent and core competencies that they need, and this can provide us information on short-term, long-term, fee-based, um, you know, summer academies, all of those different approaches to providing the necessary training to skill or upskill uh, the workforce locally. Uh, some of the emergent technologies that were mentioned already are digital engineering, um, machine learning or artificial intelligence, uh, radio frequency, radio frequency modeling. Um, some of the core things that they currently uh, have uh, needs for systems engineering, energetics processing. For those of you that don't know, I didn't know this before, energetics is blowing stuff up. Um, <laughs> and, and project management. So it goes across disciplines, uh, their employment needs 
um, you know, they have offices to run, um, projects to oversee, and so it goes beyond just the STEM, um, traditional STEM disciplines. Um, job titles, uh, challenges that they're facing with retention and recruitment, that's something big out here in the desert. Uh, how do we retain people to come here, or how do we skill the people that already live here, and, and how do we um, keep them once we have them? And uh, those are some of the top challenges that, that we've heard from uh, our partners so far. And the aerospace and in defense industry work plan. So as we have these meetings, we build a proposal, we send them the proposal, make sure that it's what we all were hearing um, from those meetings. And then we develop an action plan, which includes some of the things I just spoke about. Um, you know, do we have some summer academies? Is there a specific platform that they need their employees trained in um, that we can do a non-credit class or a fee-based course, contract education. There's so many opportunities. And I don't think that they understood the breadth of op those opportunities that we can offer. And so they're learning a lot from us as we go along, but we're primarily listening to our partners to, to identify their needs. Um, and then we come up with the action items, next step based on what we heard and the types of training we can provide. So, from all of that, I, I do want to share here the Workforce Development Baccalaureate degree. So um, we're super excited about, about this opportunity. Um, we've talked to uh, our partners. Um, we've been socializing this out in the public uh, at various presentations. Um, there seems to be a lot of uh, excitement generated around a cybersecurity technology baccalaureate. We have the associate degree. Um, the base is already providing us with people to assist in the development of this baccalaureate degree, which is underway. We had a faculty workshop. Um, we um, talked with the security advisory committee um, already, and there was a lot of excitement and they approved us moving forward with this. Um, department checklist review is being checked off as we speak. Uh, curriculum development. They've already started that process and have identified the courses that will um, build upon our associate's degree and lead to a baccalaureate. And so we're looking to have submission to the board in June so that we can submit in August um, to the state for approval. So again, a lot of work has been done, and I want to thank um, Liz Rizal and Todd Costin as well for helping support um, Saracoso in the development of this baccalaureate degree. But um, yeah, I, I'm really excited, and I've been talking about this everywhere I go, about the first baccalaureate degree for Saracoso, the first of many, I hope. Okay, thank you very much for your time. And I'm going to stop sharing. Yes, thank you all. I hope that gave you some more information on what's happening with workforce and economic development. Thank you for the presentation. Are there any questions from members of the board? Uh, it's Kay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, this is excellent, beyond excellent. Trudy, Liz, and Sean, and Todd, I know you had a piece of this too. Uh, please thank all of your, your teams and everything. And uh, this is just really exciting work. And um, Chancellor, I, I know we had a glitch last week on our um, start of our meeting and our time, but um, I kind of like the way we're doing it right now. I, I have a feeling that uh, you all kind of just maybe expanded your presentations a bit. And sometimes when we do a whole lot in one day, uh, you're leaving there and, you know, your brain's really full, but um, did you really concentrate enough on each one? And, uh, you know, we're certainly in the business of educating and we're certainly in the business of um, helping our communities. And uh, I'm just so proud as a trustee to hear all of this today. And um, I, I like the format and Congratulations and thank you. And uh, Chancellor, I know you had a piece of this too. I just have one quick comment as well. Just wanted to um, to say how excited I am that we're highlighting the amazing industry in Eastern Kern and, and so much uh, that is in area two. I think this is exactly 
what our communities are looking for. This is a model program. It's it's really thrilling. And uh, just one note, in addition to our industry partners, I just want to be sure we're capitalizing on all of the um, the other entities that will help to continue to feed the success of this program, like um, women in STEM through the um, Current Economic Development Foundation and other entities like that, especially as it relates to the diversity piece. So um, we can talk more offline about that, but this is just so many circles that I move in are, are having this same uh, conversation. I just wanna make sure that we're finding that alignment with our partners. Any other comments or questions for members of the board? Okay, <clears throat> with that, thank you very much for the presentation. Excellent information, much appreciated and congratulations on all of your hard work. We'll uh, move on to the next item on our agenda, which is public comments. Uh, this is the public comment portion for those items listed in closed session only. And since we're participating virtually, uh, Todd, do you have some instructions you might wanna read out to the public? Thank you, Trustee Agbalog, and good morning, everyone. Um, I'm, I've opened up the chat function. And so in the chat, if you'd like to speak, please state your name and the board agenda item you would like to address. The chat feature will be open for a few minutes. And then when we get to the public comment section of the board agenda, I will call on you by your name and you will, you will be able to unmute your mic and address the board at that time. Thank you, Todd. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the public comment portion of the meeting. Uh, this is the public comment portion for those items listed in closed session only. Uh, I believe we only have one item listed in closed session today, which is conference with real property negotiator. Uh, Todd, do we have anybody who wishes to address the board at this time on this particular item? We do not have any responses in the chat at this time. Okay, thank you. So with that, we'll close uh, the public comment portion of the meeting and we will adjourn into closed session. Okay, and trustees, you were provided a closed session link from Jennifer. This is the second link in your email. Please proceed to click on that link now and it will take you to the closed session.
God, if you can help me keep track of all trustees, I think we have six of the seven trustees here. Here's Trustee Agbalog. Okay, is everybody back? Yes, uh, Trustee Agbal, we're ready to go. All right, great. So the board will reconvene into open session. We had one item in closed session uh, this morning, and it was a um, conference with a real property negotiator. There was no action taken on this item in closed session. So at this point, we will. Uh, begin with the public uh, public comment portion, <clears throat> excuse me, the public comment portion uh -huh. of the meeting for open session. And um, Todd, do you wanna go ahead and read the instructions? So thank you, Trustee Agbalog. Um, I'm I've opened up the chat function. Um, if you wanna speak, please state your name and the board agenda item you would like to address in the chat. The chat feature will be open for a couple of minutes. Then when we get to the public comment section of the board agenda, I will call on you by your name and you will be able to unmute your mic and address the board at that time. Thank you, Todd. At this time, the public may address the board of trustees on any matter within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board that is not on the agenda. At the opening of the meeting, names and agenda items were taken for public comments. Um, are there any additional members of the public who wish to make public comments at this time? Todd, is there anyone who signed up to speak? Trustee Agbalog? Yes. This is Jennifer. We I received a communication from Professor Matt Garrett, who okay. asked to address the board during the open session public comments portion of the meeting. Okay, is he ready to speak to the board at this time? I do not see Matt in our attendee list. <clears throat> Okay, is he not uh, part of the Zoom meeting or is he available on phone? He's, he's not in the Zoom meeting. I'm looking at the attendee list and I do not see Matt Garrett. Okay, well, if he's not, um, he's not available. Trustee Agbalog, we have something in the chat that Matt is currently in class. His expected public comments would be at 1.30 p.m. Oh, I see. Okay, so he's unavailable. Okay. Well, are there any other uh, speakers who wish to address the board at this time? I do not see any other requests in the chat. Okay, very good. So we'll go ahead and close the public comment portion of this meeting, and we will move on to our preliminary items. Todd, excuse me, Trustee Agbalog. Yes. I see a hand raised by Jennifer Garrett. Okay. Jennifer, do you want to um, put something in the chat? Before I get too far ahead, uh, does she want to speak to the board in public comment? Yes, she's requesting to speak, so go ahead. Okay. That's fine. Let's go ahead and uh, open up the public comment portion to allow for the speaker to address the board at this time. Uh, Todd, you want to state the name of the individual who wants to speak? Okay, and then uh, Jennifer Garrett, um, please accept the unmute invitation and proceed to address the board. And as a reminder, you are limited to five minutes. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay, um, I this is I I didn't realize it would be at this time, so I'm just I just wanted to say a few things about. I know you're approving our Bakersfield College Chamber Singers tour to Central Europe today. And I just, I wanted the board to know uh, a little more about that tour than what is in the description. Um, 
This is the Chamber Singers, uh, which is an auditioned elite ensemble of, of singers from Bakersfield College. We have about 42 in the ensemble right now and 45 will go on tour this summer, June 12th through the 21st. And I just wanted you to know a little bit about the students and what they have accomplished uh, because I think it is extremely important for the board to know. Uh, the students have raised $94,000 as of Saturday night's big uh, benefit concert with Monty Byram um, and other guests. And on top of the $94,000, uh, the chamber singers have also paid $1,250 each, equaling about $57,000. So we have basically um, come up with uh, quite honestly, water bottle and candy bar um, by candy bar. Um, over the last year and a half, we have basically raised $150,000. Uh, our payment is due February 14th, which is very soon. And uh, we are about $20,000 under our amount. Um, in the past, the foundation has assisted the trip. And I just wanted you to know that our Renegade Innovation Fund was blocked from getting to the foundation because it wasn't looked at as innovative, but there is no other way for us to tell the foundation what is happening and how hard the singers have worked and what they're actually going to Central Europe to do. So with that blockage, we were left to our own, which is really good for the students and they've worked so hard. Uh, I have spoken with President Zav Dadaboy uh, twice, and when I told him we would be at about 10,000 short if we had had more attend our Saturday concert, uh, he basically said, good luck. That was a little hard to hear after raising almost $150,000. Uh, so I just want you to know we will be getting that money. We will not give up. We will make sure that we're going. But I think it's pretty disappointing to see Bakersfield College and the foundation, if if possible, um, not support this tour in any way. Uh, we are representing Bakersfield College. We've been at the Mayor's Ball. We have sung at probably 25 places at Christmas. We sing at the homecoming football game. We sing at the basketball games. We've sung at the veterans opening. We've sung for uh, voting rallies. We have sung for so many things and to have Bakersfield College the board and the foundation not help us with one penny is disappointing, especially when I see things like an emoji, uh, uh, sorry, um, of, of the tour of Black Historical Colleges, which I support a thousand percent. Uh, but to see 11,000, almost 12,000 go to that using equity funds, I'm sure. But I have a very mixed chamber singers. At least half are not white. And just to see nothing come our way, even after two pleas to the college president is disappointing and sad and there are many in the community that are very disappointed also we will get there we will make sure we go but it has been with no help from bakersfield college thank you thank you dr garrett for your comments is there anyone else who wishes to address the board at this time Trustee Ivalug, I thought I saw Tom Burke had his hand up. I'm... That was due to operator error on my part. Okay. Okay. Anybody else wishing to speak? Todd, is there anybody in the queue? Uh, no further participants in the queue have identified that they want to speak. Okay, thank you. So we'll go ahead and move on to uh, preliminary items. A, approval of consent items, business services, other than construction agenda items, SA through SD, and educational services agenda items. Uh, it looks like it's 108, oh, I'm sorry, 10A through 10D. So moved. We have a motion by Trustee gomez Heidsberg. Is there a second? Second, Jimenez. We have a second by Trustee Jimenez. Any questions or discussion from members of the board? 
Hearing or seeing none, Jennifer, will you pull the board, please? Yes. <clears throat> Trustee Gomez Heitzberg? Aye. Trustee Corkins? Aye. Trustee Meek? Aye. Trustee Carter? Aye. Trustee Jimenez? Aye. Trustee Scribner? Aye. Trustee Agbalang? Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. Next item is 6B, approval of the minutes of the special board meeting of December 8th, 2022. So moved, Corkins. We have a motion by Trustee Corkins. Do we have a second? Second, Jimenez. Seconded by Trustee Jimenez. Any discussion or questions? Hearing or seeing none, Jennifer, pull the board, please. Trustee Gomez Heitzberg? Aye. Trustee Corkins? Aye. Trustee Meek? Aye. Trustee Carter? Aye. Trustee Jimenez? Aye. Trustee Scrivener? Aye. Trustee Agbalag? Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. Next item is 6C, approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of December 13th, 2022. So moved, Corkins. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We second. have a second by Trustee Carter. Any questions or discussion? Hearing or seeing none. Jennifer, will you pull the board? Trustee Gomez Heitzberg? Aye. Trustee Corkins? Aye. Trustee Meek? Aye. Trustee Carter? Aye. Trustee Jimenez? Aye. Trustee Scribner? Aye. Trustee Agbalag? Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. Our next item is 6D. This is correspondence to the Board of Trustees and or communications. Chancellor Christian. Yes, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> the Chancellor's office has received communications from six individuals regarding two closed session items, existing litigation and discipline dismissal release reassignment uh, from uh, Sue Porter, Greg Perrone, Anthony Strauss, Mary Little, Ken Mettler, and Carolyn Juarez. Also from two individuals related to public comments and board member comments at the December 13, 2022 meeting, Brian Jenkins and GRK. There have also been emails to individual board members which have been received and reviewed. Thank you. Thank you. Are copies of those uh, letters or emails available to the board if they wanna see them? Yes. Okay. All right, we'll move on to 6E, approval of the revised 2022-2023 board calendar of meetings. Oh, I have a conflict on two of those dates. Okay, Trustee Carter, which dates are those? Well, I was trying to open it up here. Um, the, uh, the, the, well, the, the one at Saracosa, I would not be able to make it all, uh, but the one at, at BC, I could make it. I just might have to leave a little early. So it's up to you guys. Trustee Agbalog, um, the calendar right now shows a change of the February 16th meeting to February 15th. So we, we need to get approval for that so we can make that change on the website. Uh, and then we could potentially then uh, work with you and the board members uh, to find alternative dates if we needed to. So I think what I'm trying to say is that if we can get approval for the February 16th to the 15th change that is on the board calendar today, that would help us for the next meeting. So there's a time sensitivity to that item. Okay, thank you. That sounds reasonable. Um, would anybody like to offer that up in the form of a motion? I'll make yeah. that motion as presented. Thank you. It's a motion by Trustee Scribner. Is there a second? Second, Jimenez. Seconded by Trustee Jimenez. Any further discussion? Here you're seeing none. Jennifer, will you pull the board? Trustee Gomez Heitzberg? Aye. Trustee Corkins? Aye. Trustee Meek? Aye. Trustee Carter? Aye. Trustee Jimenez? Aye. 
Trustee Scrivener? Aye. Trustee Agbala? Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. Okay, so that brings us to item 6F. This is the KCCD board committee appointments for the 2023 year. Um, everybody should have received a copy of the committee assignments for this year. And I wanna thank everybody for being timely and providing uh, their requests for committee assignments this year. Um, you know, the committee work is very important. A lot of the work that we move through the district begins at the committee level. And so each of you um, are invaluable. Um, you've been placed in these committees based on your expertise and interest of the work that you do. And um, we really appreciate all of you willing to step up and participate and engage at the committee level. So uh, that's for for your board, uh, for the board to uh, take into consideration. I'll take any questions if there are any. Um, Trustee Agbalog, yep. I, I don't think we have shared the committee. No. Um, oh. so I'm pulling up the PowerPoint. Uh, so I, I'm going to go ahead and share the PowerPoint right now. Um, so I'm, this is slide three, I think. Uh, I'm going to start with, this is the Board Accreditation Committee. Can everyone see that? Yes. Go ahead, Trustee Agblog. So if you want, just go ahead and scroll through the um, slides and then um, everybody will get an opportunity to see their committee assignments. And if they have any questions, I'll take them or we can talk offline, whichever they prefer. Okay. So accreditation committee, uh, Chair Nan Gomez Heitzberg with Giovanni Jimenez and Christina Scrivener. The evaluation committee chaired by uh, Trustee Corkins with Gomez Heitzberg and Agbalag. The finance and audit committee chaired by Trustee Meek with Corkins and Gomez Heitzberg. The Legislative Committee chaired by Trustee Jimenez with Carter and Agbalag. The Officer Nominating Committee chaired by uh, Trustee Corkins with Meek and Jimenez. The Resource Development and Facilities Committee chaired by Trustee Agbalag with Meek and Corkins. Student Success with Equity uh, Committee of Focus on SEFF and DEIA. Uh, chaired by uh, Trustee Carter with Gomez Heitzberg and Scrivener. And the last is the Ad Hoc Measure J Committee, uh, chaired by um, Trustee Agbalog with Jimenez and Scrivener. And the last slide there are the, the Chancellor's goals. Uh, it's the same from uh, last year with a few fine tuning. So it's advanced student success with equity, workforce and economic development, develop district-wide co collaboration and cooperation, resource development, and develop technology infrastructure to support colleges. Thank you, Trustee Agbalag. Back to you. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Yeah, can we just have that PowerPoint emailed to us so we have it? Yes. Yes, we'll do right away, Trustee Corkins. Thank you. Okay. If there's nothing further, we'll move on to the next item, seven informational items, letter A, the 2022 State of the Colleges. It's just an informational item from the retreat that we moved to this meeting. Okay. Any comments or questions on that particular item from members of the board? If there are none, we'll move on to 7B, 2022-24 District Office Annual Administrative Unit Reviews. Similarly, this was on the retreat and we submit it to the board every year. Okay, any questions from members of the board on these items? If there are none, we'll move on to eight business services approval other than construction, letter A, adoption of a resolution authorizing the donation of surplus personal property pursuant to California Education Code 81452C. Corkins, move approval. We have a motion to approve by Trustee Corkins. Is there a second? A second, Christina. Seconded by Trustee Scribner. Any discussion, questions? Mm -hmm. If there are none, Jennifer, will you pull the board? 
Trustee Gomez Heitzberg. Aye. Trustee Corkins. Aye. Trustee Meek. Aye. Trustee Carter. Aye. Trustee Jimenez. Aye. Trustee Scribner. Aye. Trustee Agbalag. Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. The next item is 8B, adoption of a resolution authorizing the donation of surplus personal property pursuant to California Education Code 81452C. Corkins, no approval. We have a motion to approve by Trustee Corkins. Is there a second? Second, Jimenez. Seconded by Trustee Jimenez. Any discussion? Hearing or seeing none, Jennifer, will we pull the board? Trustee Gomez Heitzberg. Aye. Trustee Corkins. Aye. Trustee Meek. Aye. Trustee Carter. Aye. Trustee Jimenez. Aye. Trustee Scrivener. Aye. Trustee Agbalag. Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. Next item is 8C, authorization for the chief financial officer to execute an agreement between the current community college district on behalf of the workforce and economic development and the California Workforce Development Board for the distribution and funding allocated by AB 179 to Kern Community College District for the Farm Worker Institute of Education and Leadership Development, Inc., or FIELD. The term is from December 31st, 2022 through March 31st, 2026. The amount payable to FIELD is not to exceed $8 million to be paid from a new restricted program fund. So moved. We have a motion to approve by Trustee gomez Heitzberg. Second, Jimenez. Then there's a second by Trustee Jimenez. Any discussion on this item? Hearing or seeing none. Jennifer, will you pull the board? Trustee gomez Heitzberg. Aye. Trustee Corkins. Aye. Trustee Meek. Aye. Trustee Carter. Aye. Trustee Jimenez. Aye. Trustee Scrivener. Aye. Trustee Aguila. Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. Next item is letter D, authorization for the chief financial officer to approve a software agreement between the current community college district and SHI International Corporation for Splunk licensing. The term is from December 31st, 2022 through June 30th, 2024. The cost of the district shall not exceed $208,779.64 to be paid from the GU001 unrestricted fund. So moved, Corkins. We have a motion to approve by Trustee Corkins. Is there somebody seconding? Second, second. Jimenez. We have a second by Trustee Jimenez. Any discussion? Hearing or seeing none. Jennifer, will you pull the board? Trustee Gomez Heitzberg. Aye. Trustee Corkins. Aye. Trustee Meek. Aye. Trustee Carter. Aye. Trustee Jimenez. Aye. Trustee Scrivener. Aye. Trustee Agbalag. Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. Our next item is 10 Educational Services Approval, Letter A, Approval of the Attached Curriculum Reports of Courses, Programs, Certificates, and New Community Service Education Course Offerings as part of the District's Curriculum for Bakersfield College and Saracoso Community College. Move approval, Corkins. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Trustee Scribner. Any discussion? I had a question. Sure, if, Trustee Carter. If I, if I saw something and I wanted removed, um, how would I go about that? Um, Trustee Carter and Trustee Agbalog, feel free to jump in. Uh, if you have a question related to curriculum, you know, typically I would have uh, Vice Chancellor Manny Mazzano's working with you. If um, you're taking that particular course out of the PDF as a standalone, then you could, at the time of the meeting, you could ask for a modification to the motion to remove that particular course out of the, the remaining course package so we could approve the remaining course packet and then consider the item individually. Trustee Agbalog, if there's anything else you'd like to add. I concur. 
Is there something, Trusty Carter, that you would like removed from the particular list, or is that just a question for consideration um, in the future? Both. Um, I had one that I, I wasn't real happy with, but I'm going to let it go. But I was I was wondering, what do I do about this in the future for some that are, um, I did, you know, actually want to follow through with. So now I know. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on the table. Any further discussion? <clears throat> if there's none, Jennifer, will you pull the board? <clears throat> Trustee Gomez Heitzberg. Aye. Trustee Corkins. Aye. Trustee Meek. Aye. Trustee Carter. Aye. Trustee Jimenez. Aye. Trustee Scrivener. Aye. Trustee Aguila. Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. Next item is 10B. This is the approval of the 2023 24 district wide academic calendar. Do we have a motion? Move approval, Corkins. We second, Gomez Heitzberg. And we have a second by Trustee Gomez Heitzberg. Any discussion or questions on the item? If there are none, Jennifer, will you pull the board? Trustee Gomez Heitzberg? Aye. Trustee Corkins? Aye. Trustee Meek? Aye. Trustee Carter? Aye. Trustee Jimenez? Aye. Trustee Scribner? Aye. Trustee Agbala? Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. Our next item is 10C, approval of items 10D through 10G, authorizing out-of-state travel for Bakersfield College students, advanced jazz combo and chamber singers. Move for approval. We have a motion by Trustee Meek. Is there a second? Second, second Seconded by Trustee Gomez Heitzberg. Any discussion on these items? I would just uh, bring up that based on the discussion by Jennifer Garrett on the lack or the shortfall, there's no request here for money from us in any sort. So I, we have no authority to approve anything today. Had they put a request in, I think, and gone through finance, and I would defer to Trustee Meek. We could probably have considered it as something we could pull from the reserves if it was an emergency or something to help them get to their goal. I think they've done a great job here, but uh, being informed of it today with the agenda already printed, I think, Chancellor, there's nothing we can really do today. Would you agree? Uh, I can follow up on it, Trustee Corkins, uh, on this on this matter. Trustee Meek, it's really your call if finance would want to review that or if we want to consider putting reserves into that. Do you want to consider that or not? Um, I was going to make a statement at the end of the meeting, but I'll make it now. Um, I had received a communication from a constituent on this same matter, and I was very um, glad to see that Dr. Garrett came today with this. Um, I have um, forwarded that communication to the chancellor and um, I'm waiting for a reply back, which I think now we would all like to hear. Um, the foundation has always been very, very supportive of um, our choral group and that uh, whole department. Uh, I just don't know that this falls under finance. Yeah, it may not. It may be just a board issue and if the board wanted to use reserves, I mean, it's it's up to the board and I, I hate to see them fall short at $10,000 and if they've done all may, that. May I, may I offer something? That's uh, Trustee Scribner. Thank you. I, I think that my concern here is about process again. You know, what, where was the breakdown in how this was handled and uh, who gave it to, to, to whom to review? And I, I think to me, it really keeps us as an organization transparent and um, and uh, above board when we can review what happened. And I do think that the spirit of, of what everyone's saying, I share that we want, to, we want to be in support of the good work these students are doing and honor their personal investment in this and see them go successfully and feeling supported. But I also agree this is not the place to have that conversation, but, but maybe... Um, wherever it's appropriate to place it in, in this meeting, 
Um, I do think that a, a review of what happened in this particular instance and if our policy was followed or our process broke down. Thank you, uh, Dresky. Uh, Scrivener, are there any other comments? Yes, uh, Chancellor, when, when is this trip? W the, um, the trip is this summer. Dr. Oh, okay, I see now, it's in June. Yeah, um, yeah let's go on ahead and, and figure out if the foundation is gonna pick this up or, or what happened. And then certainly, John, we can, we can take a look at it. Okay. That I knew the trip. She has to file like two hundred thousand, which I think she has by the fourteenth. So I just wanted if the foundation isn't going to pick it up, maybe we can look at it and give the option to the board if they would, are interested in helping out. So if that that'll be good for me. With that, I uh, call for question on the motion to move ahead. Okay, thank you, Trustee Corkin. So Chancellor Christian, I think you heard hmm. from a members of the board and think it'd be appropriate for you just to follow up on this item and come back to us with some additional information with some we'll options. Do. We'll so do, would, thank you. This would come back around maybe on the March meeting then? We have a meeting coming up on February 15th. So I could uh, respond to the board by February 15th. Okay. So but she has to file by the 14th, right? Send all of her money in? Yes. Yes, I'll, I'll get on it right away. Okay. I work with uh, President Databoy, the foundation, and with our CFO to, to figure out some options. And okay, thanks. we'll also look into the process, Trustee Scribner, as you had mentioned as well. So I'll compile all that information for the board. Thank you all. Just one thing I'd like to add, uh, Chancellor Christian, you know, um, if, if individuals or groups go to the foundation and request funding, and um, under a specific fund or program and um, they're denied or they don't meet the criteria. Um, I'd also like to know what steps the foundation takes to maybe redirect people to uh -oh. alternative options as well. Maybe they don't qualify for a specific fund, but maybe they're getting, they're receiving guidance or direction to go apply for, you know, another type of grants, or maybe there's another group or organization that could help. I'd like to know if there are any options like that available as well. Will do, Trustee Aguilar. Thank you. <clears throat> so with that, we have a motion in the second. Uh, Jennifer, we pull the board. Yes, Trustee gomez Heitzberg. Aye. Trustee Corkins. Aye. Trustee Meek. Aye. Trustee Carter. Aye. Trustee Jimenez. Aye. Trustee Scribner. Aye. Trustee Agbalag. Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. Our next item is 10H, authorization for the chief financial officer to execute an agreement between the current community college district on behalf of Bakersfield College and Cambridge West Partnership LLC to develop an educational master plan. The term is from the date of execution through October 31st, 2023. The cost to the district is not to exceed $138,750 to be paid from the GU001 unrestricted fund. So moved, Gomez Hartsburg. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Um, any comments or questions from members of the board? If there are none, Jennifer, will you pull the board? Yes. Trustee Gomez Hartsburg. Aye. Trustee Corkins. Aye. Trustee Meek. Aye. Trustee Carter. Aye. Trustee Jimenez. Aye. Trustee Scribner? Aye. Trustee Agbalag? Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. Next item is uh, I did, approve. Did we do E, F, and G? Yeah, in one motion. Oh, sorry. Thank you. So our next item is uh, I approval for the chief financial officer to sign the memorandum of understanding between the Kern Community College District as the fiscal agent of the Central Motherload Regional Consortium and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation to provide professional development training for the 15 colleges in the consortium on employer engagement and career education. The term of the agreement is December 9th, 2022 through June 30th, 2023. The cost of the district is 
$119,000 to be paid from the RP676 restricted fund. Corkins, move approval. There's a motion. Do we have a second? Carter, second. Seconded by Trustee Carter. Any discussion or questions? If there are none, Jennifer, will you pull the board? Yes. Trustee Gomez Heitzberg? Aye. Trustee Corkins? Aye. Trustee Meek? Aye. Trustee Carter? Aye. Trustee Jimenez? Aye. Trustee Scribner? Aye. Trustee Agbalag? Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. Next item is authorization for the Chief Financial Officer to execute agreements between um, the current Community College District as the Central Motherload Regional Consortium Fiscal Agent and the Regional Consortium Community College Districts as sub-grantees for the execution of regionally aligned economic and workforce development initiatives. The term is from July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2024. The amount payable to the district is $14,689, uh, I'm sorry, $689,251 to be deposited into the RP676 Restricted Program Fund. The amount payable to the subgrantee community college districts is in the amount of $12,485,863 to be paid from the RP676 Restricted Program Fund. We have a motion by Trustee Corkins. Is there a second? Second, Gomez Heitzberg. Seconded by Trustee Gomez Heitzberg. Any discussion on this item or questions? I have a question. So Trustee are these, two, these, you have two amounts there, about $2 million difference. Is that two different, two different amounts of money or is that, uh, is there a $2 million boot that goes into that fund and stays there? Um, Trustee Carter, I'll, I'll respond to it and invite um, Mike Giacomini or Trudy to add. So we receive money from the state and then we, we turn around because we are the fiscal agent and then we pay it out to the college. So th those are the two numbers that you see there. And then what's the, uh, where does the other $2 million go? It just lays in the account or? Uh, we, have, we have staffing that we do to be the lead to administer this large grant. Okay. So we, we get some funding for the staffing of, of this large um, central mother load lead agency. Okay. There are no other questions or comments at this time. Uh, Jennifer, will you pull the board? Yes. Trustee Gomez Heitzberg? Aye. Trustee Corkins? Aye. Trustee Meek? Aye. Trustee Carter? Aye. Trustee Jimenez? Aye. Trustee Scribner? Aye. Trustee Agbala? Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. So the next item is letter K, authorization for the interim chief financial officer to accept a grant between the current community college district on behalf of Portable College and the California Farm Workers Foundation 2022 Beginning Farmer and Farm Worker Training in Workforce Development uh, BFFTP grant program from the California Department of Food and Agriculture. The term of the contract is from November 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2024. The amount payable to the district is not to exceed $172,175.90 to be deposited into the new restricted program fund. Corkins, move approval. We have a motion by Trustee Corkins. Is there a second? Second, Jimenez. Seconded by Trustee Jimenez. Any discussion, questions on this item? If there are none, Jennifer, we pull the board. Yes. Trustee Gomez Heitzberg? Aye. Trustee Corkins? Aye. Trustee Meek? Aye. Trustee Carter? Aye. Trustee Jimenez? Aye. Trustee Scribner? Aye. Trustee Agbalov? Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. Next item is letter L, authorization for the chief financial officer to enter into a service agreement between the current community college district on behalf of Bakersfield College and the University of California Merced. 
The term is from December 14, 2022 through December 31st, 2023. The amount payable to the district is $106,000 to be deposited into a new restricted grant fund. Move a motion, Corkins. Second. We have a motion by uh, Trustee Corkins. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Meek. Any discussion or questions? If there are none, Jennifer, will you pull the board? Trustee Gomez Heitzberg? Aye. Trustee Corkins? Aye. Trustee Meek? Aye. Trustee Carter? Aye. Trustee Jimenez? Aye. Trustee Scrivener? Aye. Trustee Agbala? Trustee Agbalag? Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. The next item is letter M, authorization for the interim chief financial officer to execute a master services agreement and statement of work between the current community college district on behalf of Bakersfield College and Tech Tycoon LLC to provide the services of a senior banner consultant on a time and material basis. The term of the agreement is from December 12, 2022 through December 11th. 2023, with the option to hire after six months. The cost of the district is not to exceed $200,000 to be paid from the GU030 unrestricted fund. Move approval, Corkins. We have a motion to approve by Trustee Corkins. Do we have a second? Second, Gomez Heitzberg. Seconded by Trustee Gomez Heitzberg. Any discussion or questions on this item? If there are none, Jennifer, will you pull the board? Trustee Gomez Heitzberg? Aye. Trustee Corkins? Aye. Trustee Meek? Aye. Trustee Carter? Aye. Trustee Jimenez? Aye. Trustee Scribner? Aye. Trustee Agbalag? Aye. That concludes the vote. Thank you. The next item is N. Authorization for the Chief Financial Officer to enter into a grant agreement between the Kern Community College District on behalf of Bakersfield College and the California Community College's Chancellor's Office on behalf of the California Community College's Board of Governors to create a uh, perioperative nurse apprenticeship program. Terms of the agreement are from October 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2026. The amount payable to the district is $499,514 to be deposited into an RP431 restricted program fund. Move approval, Corkins. I'll we have a second. motion to approve by Trustee Corkins. We have a second by Trustee Scribner. Any discussion or questions from members of the board on this item? If there are none, Jennifer, will you pull the board? Yes. Trustee Gomez Heitzberg? Aye. Trustee Corkins? Aye. Trustee Meek? Aye. Trustee Carter? Aye. Trustee Jimenez? Aye. Trustee Scrivener? Aye. Trustee Agbala? Aye. That concludes the vote. Very good. That was the last item on our agenda. Uh, but before we go ahead and adjourn, I wanted to open up the floor if there are any board member comments or reports. Okay. Trustee Agbala? Yeah. Yes, Trustee Gomez Heitzberg. I just want to commend the colleges on their state of the college reports. It's um, always good to see the use of data and a focus on outcomes. Also, the collaboration across the college district um, so that we're looking at leveraging expertise for the benefit of our students as a whole. And then my last comment is, um, I'm wondering if we have something scheduled in the future where we'll get that same kind of data back and look at it through a disaggregated lens. Is that, is that something we do on an annual basis? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just don't remember at this point. Um, Trustee Agbalog, yes, we, we disaggregate the data all the time our dashboards are set up that way and we are able to uh, provide that information uh, to the to the trustees thank you trustee gomez heitzberg are there any reports or comments from members of the board before we adjourn i have a question yes trustee carter 
Um, I, you know, looking forward to the uh, ad hoc committee assignments and noticing that I'm chair of the uh, equity and inclusion. Um, I've been working on some ideas uh, on this and how to handle it, but I didn't know what resources we had. Who would I speak to about that? And, and and also find out what the requirements are for that. I think this was state mandated, isn't it? Isn't this a something that was handed down to us from the state? Um, I'll take the question, Trustee Carter. Um, yes, uh, I'll work with you as we set up our first committee meeting. From the vice chancellor's standpoint, we will have vice chancellor A. Bali being the lead person who would staff you on this committee, and he'll work closely with Vice Chancellor Mudsanos on it. The committee right now, um, Trustee Agbalog has, um, the, the name of the committee is Student Success with Equity, and we will review with you the, uh, the goals and metrics that are outlined from the state. And you will see that the colleges at the current community college district actually are doing very, very well. And, uh, and then we can set our agenda for the first meeting. In fact, I mean, going back to the metrics, uh, in, in many of the metrics, we're actually leading the state in our performance of student success. And um, when we disaggregate the data, you will see we, we, we're improving student success with equity. Great, great. Yeah, well, that would be good. I'd like to, uh, so would I start with Abe then or with you? Yes, we will reach out to you, Trustee Carter, both Abe and I will reach out to you. Okay, it would be better sooner than later. Will do. Okay, thank you, Trustee Carter. Any others? All right, if there are none, uh, thank you all for making yourself available to participate. And um, thank you so much for your time and the staff for helping us put this together. So with that, we're hereby adjourned. <laughs>